How's it going? You got it.
test, test, audio test, 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 test.
uh, <clears throat> invite all of the legislators to the chambers so that we can get started. One second, okay? Give me one second. I'm going to call this meeting of the legislature to order. I ask Legislator uh, Dirigi Witten to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and please remain standing. I'd like to have a moment of silence for General Colin Powell, who passed away from COVID complications, former general, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, former Secretary of State, former National Security Advisor, truly a, a great man who will be missed. Thank you.
Mike, you want to call the roll? Thank you, Presiding Officer. Roll call. Deputy Presiding Officer Howard Coppell. Alternate Deputy Presiding Officer Denise Ford. Legislator Sela Bino. Legislator Carrie Solage. Carrie, I see you. Thank you. Thank you. Legislator Debbie Mulet. Here. Thank you. Legislator C. William Gaylord III. Legislator Vincent Muscarella. Here. Thank you. Legislator Ellen Birnbaum. Legislator Delia Deridgi Witten. Legislator James Kennedy. Legislator Thomas McKevitt. Here. Legislator Laura Schaefer. Here. Legislator John Ferretti. Here. Legislator Arnold Drucker. Here. Legislator Rosemary Walker. Here. Legislator Joshua Lafazan. Here. Thank you. Legislator Stephen Rhodes. Here. Minority Leader Kavan Abrahams. Here. Presiding Officer Richard Nicolello. Here. We have a quorum, sir. Okay, thank you. Motion to open the budget hearing by Legislator Deputy Presiding Officer Coppell, seconded by Minority Leader Abrahams. All in favor of opening the hearing, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, aye. hearing is open. We, uh, the legislators will be discussing the budget and the budget amendments uh, when those items come up, but I would like to offer this opportunity for any member of the public who might be here to uh, provide their comments with respect to the budget. Right. <laughs> Hearing uh, none, uh, Minority Leader Abrahams makes a motion to close the hearing, seconded by Deputy Presiding Officer Coppell. All in favor of closing the hearing signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, carries unanimously. Deputy Presiding Officer Coppell makes a motion uh, to All right, um, this is the ordinance number 104-2021, uh, legislative budget, which is clerk item number 354-2021. Motion by uh, Deputy Presiding Officer Coppell, seconded by Minority Leader Abrahams. Uh, uh, now that budget is now before us, any debate or discussion on the legislature's budget? Hearing none, uh, all in favor of the legislature's budget ordinance signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Carries unanimously. The next item is the county budget, which is clerk item number 351 of 2021, ordinance number 102 of 2021. It's a motion by Legislator Drucker, seconded by Legislator Birnbaum uh, to uh, for, uh, to open right. to put this item before us. Okay, now uh, we have the majority has certain amendments. We'll have a motion in a second, and then we we'll can discuss those amendments. Um, motion by Legislator Rhodes, seconded by Legislator Ferretti, to. This is the motion and second for the minor, uh, majority's amendments. Okay, so those amendments now are before us. Um, motion, wait, do we? On the majority budget amendments. Start off in the proposition that the sales tax revenue projections in the county executive's 2022 budget are wrong. Once again, these, uh, these 
projections are incorrect. The, the administration has a history of under budgeting for sales taxes and as a result overtaxing property taxes. In 2000, for the 2021 budget, the administration is off by more than $300 million. By the end of this year, it will probably be a figure of close to $350 million. That is a mistake of an enormous magnitude. Last year, the administration projected a 20% decrease in sales tax revenues in 2021. They were contrary, that was contrary to every projection, both nationally and state, with respect to economic growth. This gross error resulted in overtaxing. The budget has to rely more on property taxes to make up for ridiculously low sales tax revenues. For 2022 budget, the administration is wrong again. Their projection ignores confirmed sales tax receipts. The administration is projecting a $1,375,000,000 in sales tax revenues for 2022. The county is on pace for exceeding that number in 2021. What does this mean? That in reality, what the administration is projecting is either no increase in sales taxes in 2022 or a decrease in sales taxes in 2022. Again, this ignores the estimates of the Office of Legislative Budget Review and the Comptroller. It ignores the national forecasts of growth of up, up to 3.7%. It ignores Moody's forecasts of regional growth of 5.3%. The majority's $50 million ta tax relief program. The county is overtaxing its residents. It's time to return those monies to our residents. We are taking $50 million from the unassigned fund balance to provide tax relief. The residents need this relief. School taxes are hitting our residents now and our offices are getting inundated, largely because the assessment doesn't pick up the phone. We are hearing it in our communities. The middle class is leaving the county. Our seniors are leaving our county. Our working families are leaving the county. There was a story in Newsday, another story about people leaving Nassau County because of the high cost of living. Combined with the fee cuts, cuts the majority amendments provide real tax relief. We are reducing patronage. The current administration increased the budget in constituent affairs by over $850,000 uh, $850, over the prior administration. This includes seven public relations positions in constituent affairs alone, not including the county executive's own budget. When you look at these types of jobs and you consider this, that the Department of Assessment is understaffed. Residents can't get anyone to answer the phones. Consumer Affairs has a backlog in home improvement renewals and new license applications that takes months. Work is not being done. Contractors are suffering. DPW and Parks do not have enough staff to adequately maintain our sumps and parks. In our jail, we are forcing corrections, corrections officers to work 16-hour shifts. It is unacceptable for this level of patronage when this is going on in our county. Outside counsel. For years, our colleagues to the left railed about outside counsel. Curran has maintained the same level of outside counsel, but now in this year's budget projects to increase outside counsel by $7 million and increase the county attorney's office by $1 million. This is unacceptable. In sum, the majority corrects the errors in the county executive's budget. We pay for the fee cuts, we provide $50 million in tax relief, and we cut out patrons. We also remove in the four-year plans the county executive's tax increases in future years. So today we can vote to, to cut taxes, or we can vote for more over-budgeting and over-taxes. We can vote to remove the tax increases in the out years, or we can vote to keep them in. I urge all of my colleagues to vote for these amendments. And I will open up the floor to anyone who'd like to speak. Sure. Minority Leader Abrahams. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, before I get into my comments, just as a point of clarification, uh, on, the, on the motion to amend, it, um, we were against that motion. So if it could be recorded on the record that we were against that motion, um, that would be. Those are, that's, the, that's the vote on the amendments. 
but the motion to amend the budget, um, if I understand correctly, still requires a vote itself. Just a motion to amend the budget to begin the process requires. It. Sorry, I believe it was a motion and a second to get it on the floor so that we could have this discussion, and then the vote comes at the end of the discussion. Okay, I understand that, but I, if I understand, if I if I remember from years past, that that motion, um, it, that that particular the way it went, the way it happened or occurred, it gives the impression that we were in favor of it. Just to, I just noted for the record, that's all I'm doing. Um, you know, I understand how the vote's going to work. Uh, from, in regards to the the budget, we feel that the, the county executive. For, for, for what we've seen over for a period of years, she has proposed a, a thoughtful, balanced budget that delivered significant tax relief to the residents that have been hit hard by the pandemic. Uh, the budget is fiscally responsible. Uh, we, await, we are still awaiting the comments of, of, of NIFA. And from that standpoint, um, because of the fiscal responsibility and the relief it provides to taxpayers, we were prepared to support it. Uh, however, the amendments that we see before us today uh, by the legislative majority, we feel are irresponsible, they're reckless, uh, they have no approach towards fiscal mismanagement, and they are the same level of shenanigans and ideas that we heard many years ago on why we have a control period today. This budget that's proposed, or this amendment that's proposed by the majority would set us back. It would move the clock backwards. It would allow the county to continue to have a control board. A knife is getting ready to opine on the county budget in the next coming days, and I find it hard to believe that they're gonna support additional reliance on sales tax. Just to go through the numbers, the county executive's proposed budget last year had a 34.8% reliance on sales tax. This year, her budget has, for two, fiscal year 2022, has a 42% reliance on sales tax. So the notion that the county executive underestimates sales tax revenue is completely absurd and ridiculous. And then thirdly, now though, the majority's amendment is now putting a reliance of 44% on sales tax. That's almost 10% from fiscal year 2021 to 2022. And while at the same time, it provides no significant revenue or expenditure reductions to pay for it. So again, this budget, their projections are made up. I haven't seen one person quantify their projections in regards to this 44% reliance on sales tax, not one. It provides an uncertain platform to an unprecedented situation as we're dealing with the pandemic and COVID. The, the, the budget that's being presented by the majority is eager to take us backwards. It's gonna move the clock backwards. And it's most important that the reductions that we're seeing in the revenue, they're gonna provide even a more significant impact on some of the programs that we find near and dear as those provided by Beeb or the fire department or anything along those lines as well. Um, they will continue, as you heard from the commissioner, continue to hurt uh, 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 those that are in um, uh, providing for the police department. So it is strongly suggested that we support, that we do not support uh, these amendments, and that's what I'm asking my colleagues to do. I think that, as, as I said before, we are going to look to see what NIFA says in the coming days. Um, and from the sense that we've gotten from past budgets, they, there is a strong uh, I believe they're going to strongly oppose any increases in sales tax as it pertains to that. We are all eager to remove a control board under the under the control have a control board removed from from under the county, and this budget that is presented by the county executive does that. So, okay. So from that standpoint, we want to be able to allow that to move forward. The county executive has announced that she is going to with a committee, hopefully that's joined by the, the majority. She's gonna have a committee that's gonna address the fees. I think we all wanna see the fees go down, especially those of us that have voted against it. Uh, we wanna see the fees go down, but we're gonna do it in a way that's fiscally responsible, that does not continue to hurt the county as, as it moves forward out of, this, uh, out of the perils of, of past previous, previous administration's budgets. And if we can move it 
in a way where we're able to reduce the fees, but at the same time keep the budget balanced, that's our goal. But as I said before, um, this budget, these amendments, uh, I haven't seen anyone quantify the sales tax numbers. Uh, and from that standpoint, using that level of reliance of the budget, 44% of the budget will be based off of sales tax. That's almost 10% from last year to this year. Seems to be fixed fiscally irresponsible and reckless. And I'm urging my colleagues to vote no. Uh, Deputy Presiding Officer Copel. I want to thank uh, my friend Kavan Abrahams for those remarks, but I'd like to uh, perhaps correct a few misimpressions over here. First of all, uh, I think that a concentration on percentage of reliance is not particularly relevant. Uh, the, the question is, in reality, what kind of numbers are being brought in by the sales tax? Is it going to be more? Is it not going to be more? If the sales tax numbers happen to come in at such a rate that uh, they make up a much larger uh, percentage of the county's revenue, well, that's just fine. That just shows that we're doing well, and uh, uh, it reflects reality, and there's no reason not to rely on that, not, not to use those numbers. Percentages are just not relevant. Uh, you mentioned uh, the question of fees. Again, once again, we, we in the majority, I think, are re recognizing reality. Many of these fees already have been found unconstitutional by the courts. And uh, to continue to impose them uh, flies in the face of reality. They're almost certainly going to be uh, knocked down by the courts uh, in the future, or probably in the not too distant future. And moreover, we'd run the risk by continuing to impose them of uh, having to actually refund money that, that we're collecting now, which flies in the face of what we know uh, have been court opinions. Uh, finally, NIFA is being mentioned as, as, uh, as someone to rely upon on, in terms of projections. And this is the same NIFA that uh, a year ago uh, projected, insisted, together with the administration, I might add, uh, insisted on projecting a 20% decrease in sales tax, which once again flew in the face of reality. At the time, we were uh, experiencing, we had experienced, I should say, it was just a year ago now, an 8% decrease in revenues for the year. And uh, it was practically mathematically impossible to reach anything close to the 20%. It was, it was virtually impossible for that to happen. Nonetheless, they insisted on doing it. Uh, it, it is a politicized uh, group at this point and has been for a long time. And uh, I, I certainly, I for one certainly do not put any credence in what, the, in what they suggest and what they, in what they estimate. It, it's, it's not really worth anything as far as I'm concerned. Anyone else? Legislator Rhodes and then Legislator Ferretti. I certainly appreciate the, uh, the deputy presiding officer's uh, comments and his diplomacy uh, in making those comments. Uh, I, would, I would be a, a little bit more direct. Um, Laura Kern lied to us last year, and we knew at the time she was lying to us last year. Us being 8% down in sales tax revenue during the budget process, that was what was uh, ultimately looked like we were going to be, and then turning around and saying in 2021 that we were going to be 20% down off of 2020's revenues was ludicrous last year. Um, we knew that it was ludicrous last year, but when the county executive gave us those numbers, NIFA, the controller, the Office of uh, Management and Budget, all swore to it as being true. And what happened as a result? As a result, Nassau County is collecting $345 million in sales tax revenue above what was forecast. What does that mean for the taxpayer? That means for the taxpayer that we collected $345 million in property taxes that we did not need to collect from them for the purposes of the county's bottom line. And what made it even worse is that that under forecasting of revenue, 
by that large an amount of money was then used by the county executive, used by NIFA, and used by my colleagues in the minority as justification to approve $1.5 billion in debt refinancing that bought us short-term relief in terms of debt service to help the, budget, the bottom line of the budget, but is going to cost taxpayers substantially more in the long term in the out years when the amount of debt service that we have is going to spike. That is reckless and fiscally irresponsible. And this year, the majority's budget plan is to make sure that that same mistake, that same misrepresentation that was made last year for different purposes is not repeated this year. We're presenting a plan that makes sure that we don't collect one more dollar from taxpayers than we have to, and in fact, does the important work of returning dollars to the pockets of taxpayers in the form of real, sustainable tax cuts. Not the gimmick that was employed by the county executive, where you have one year of tax cuts and then all of a sudden we have tax increases to slowly take away those tax cuts so that at the end of four years you're right back to where you started from. Instead, we want to do sustainable tax cuts that provide actual relief to residents. We want to provide sustainable fee cuts that actually provide relief to residents. And my colleagues in the minority and the county executive can try and posture that any way that they want to. But by a vote in the, against these amendments, the minority is voting against sustainable tax cuts. The minority is voting against sustainable fee cuts, many of which have already been many of which have already been ruled to be unconstitutional and, and we know are unnecessary. And we have accounted for every dollar through responsible budget forecasting of sales tax revenue instead of the intentional misrepresentation and misforecasting of sales tax revenue, which serves only uh, for the purpose of padding the county's budget. We have a responsibility not to take one more dollar than is necessary out of the pockets of taxpayers to fund the legitimate operations of government. We are exercising that responsibility seriously. The administration is not, and I would urge all of our colleagues to, uh, to vote in favor of the budget amendments and provide actual, real, sustainable relief to the taxpayers of Nassau County who are suffering as a result of the county executive's reassessment and her reassessment tax increase. Legislator Ferretti. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm not going to repeat a lot of what Legislator Rose just said. I was going to make many of the same points. You know, um, I would just, you know, I've heard for years the minority in the legislature screaming about these fees, that they're excessively high, they're unconstitutional, they're illegal, they shouldn't be. And I think I would uh, generally agree with that. Well, here's your chance. Here's your opportunity. A couple weeks ago, we voted on the elimination of those fees, the reduction of some others, and your response was, show us how you're going to make up the money. We just did. We just did. Just like we said a year ago that the sales tax projection was artificially low. We were right. The Office of Legislative Budget Review was right. The controller was right. Well, this year, I, I don't think, I think it's somewhat comical that we're hearing once again that our projections are quote unquote reckless. What's reckless was what we saw last year that's going to saddle our children and our grandchildren, not only with enormous debt for years to come, but for NIFA for years to come. Because now we're stuck with NIFA for, for the next half, half of a century. Uh, because of that, under intentional, intentional and obvious under projection that you all went along with. And so now today you have a chance. You have a chance to follow through with all the political screaming you've done over the last eight years and you have a chance to get rid of these fees. And if you don't, if you don't take it, they're your fees. They're your fees. The same thing with the taxes. You know, this, this tax cut the county executive has proposed, this property tax cut, well, that's great. Except what's the, the devil's in the details. The taxes go up next year and the year after and the year after. And we're eliminating those tax hikes that the county executive has proposed for the next three years following this year. You want to vote no? They're your tax hikes. 
to your property tax hikes. We've presented a balanced budget, a fair budget, and one that's, that's in, in, in it, it, it talks to reality. And it's provided the revenue that's needed for this meaningful tax, tax these meaningful tax cuts. Um, and so I would strongly urge all legislators uh, to, to um, vote in favor of these common sense amendments. And I'd be remiss not to mention uh, an amendment that is very dear to my heart, which uh, I know the presiding officer didn't mention, but I know it's dear to his heart as well, which is the amendment for the rat extermination. Um, it's, it's certainly a problem in my district, as well as many of your districts. I see Legislator Drucker over there laughing. I'm sure you, you deal with it as well. Um, but it's certainly a program that has been in place in Nassau County in the past and should be uh, re-implemented because, uh, as the presiding officer said, uh, and as we heard from Con Commissioner Arnold, we don't have the staff to maintain our sumps. As a result, we are part of the problem. We're part of the reason that this infestation has been happening in our communities, and we have an obligation to uh, assist residents in curing it. Thank you. Anyone else? From our standpoint, um, legislative for ready, we we understand that there's money for the infestation of, of rodents. It's in the board of health. So I mean, I would I would allow someone from the, the I don't know if someone from the administration wants to speak to it, but that's that's our understanding in regards to that. Um, it, it it seems like we're gonna you know uh, 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 I guess agree to disagree to say it politely. Um, the budget that you've the amendments you've proposed. I mean, flat out are going to put us in the same peril. I and mean, some of you weren't here for this, and only a handful of us were here for this in the early 2000s. And we saw risky budgets that were based off of inflated sales tax. And I mean, you, you're continuing to say that, that the sales tax is based off of numbers that you've seen. But I don't know, did you hire an economist, someone to help you determine these projections? Or are they just numbers that you just grabbed out the sky to try to balance some of the other stuff that you want to do in terms of the fee reductions to try to correct your record. Um, you said before that we would be owning the sales tax, I'm sorry, we would be owning the fee reductions if we voted no to the amendments today. Well, I mean, we, we've, we're never, or, or, yeah, but, but we've never going to own them because, um, quite frankly, we, you supported the public safety fee, or your colleagues did, as well as it pertains to many of the other fees. And from our standpoint, um, it would be fiscally reckless and irresponsible, that's the term that I used, to try to do this stuff and balance the budget on the eve of the election. Um, and that's really what you're trying to do is score points on the eve of the election, which we totally get that. We're two weeks out and I know what you guys are trying to do. And look, it's, it, it, it is what it is. But, but from that standpoint, um, we're gonna vote against these, the motion to amend today. Um, we feel that the, these, these amendments, and not in conjunction with NIFA, a control board that actually came through on 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 the watch of of, of 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 on your heels based off the reckless budgeting that happened in the 90s uh and it's still here with us to this day and honestly um that 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 structure being here that agency being here has limited us in terms of what we can do so um knife is going to have a very strong opinion on your budget as amended uh, we'll see what the opinion comes back on or later this week, but I find it hard to believe that they are going to allow the county to proceed with a reliance on sales tax, which goes from 34.8 percent of based on what the county executive proposed last year to 42 percent that she proposed this year, and you're still saying that she she still has a faulty budget with sales tax and she doesn't she underestimates. So now your number of 44 percent. Why did you stop at 44? How come you didn't go all the way up to 50 percent? You know, why don't you just blow up the growth, the growth rate of the sales tax all the way up? I mean, it's not based on anything. I mean, who, who, if you could share with me before we close this part of the, the process, who exactly advised you on the sales tax growth that the number can go exponentially up higher? I would love to hear that. I mean, look, guys, I mean, there comes a point where you got to roll up your sleeves and do what's fiscally responsible. None of us like the fees. We voted against them. And I know you don't like them either, and that's why you're trying to correct your, your record now. So you're trying to put up a budget now and you're talking tough and that's about we'll own it. But, but the bottom line is nobody likes the fees, but I like a fiscally responsible budget too. I do have a fiduciary responsibility to the taxpayers to make sure that the county doesn't fall into, continues to fall into financial peril. And the county executive's budget does that. 
It provides taxpayer relief while at the same time responsible growth in sales tax. It provides a tax decrease while at the same time making sure to balance its budget. It does all these things, but we got to do a one-upmanship. We're going to try to be one better than the county executive for political reasons. It's, it's, it's unfortunate that we're even at this point, but we're going to vote against these amendments to, to emote. If you were willing to put up the county executive's budget, which does address many of these things, and join the process as we go into the fees, we would love to see that. But that's not going to be the case, and we get why we're not. So if we can't do move forward together, then we're going to vote to against the amendments today that we're seeing forward. Thank you. Senator Richie Wynn. I just want to say one thing about the refinance, which I think was a, a really good move that all 19 of us did. Um, NAFA is not going to be held over as it is in the position that it is today as an oversight for the, everything we do. It's only going to be um, kept regarding the, um, the refi bond. So it's not going to be that we're under a control period for that time. So. I just don't think that that's a good message to send. I think it was something very responsible that we did. So I don't want it to make it sound like NIFA would be under would be under control of NIFA for the entire time that it takes for us to um, pay off the refinance debt. Uh, <clears throat> just a couple of points in response. Um, whether or not NIFA remains in control period probably depends on whether a Democrat or Republican is elected county executive, from my perspective. But the. The jump from 34.8 percent to 42 percent um, in sales taxes in the county executive projection, looking at the wrong number, the 42 percent, was closer to being accurate. The 34.8 percent as uh, of, of the total budget was completely inaccurate. That was the forecast for a 20 percent reduction. More importantly, the 44 percent that we're projecting in terms of the overall budget, the sales tax revenues for making up 44 percent was exactly what sales taxes were in 2019 as, as compared to the total county budget. So therefore, this is not something that's extreme, out of the ordinary, et cetera. In terms of what it, where our projection is based on, we do know certain things and you, that cannot be denied, which is that the actual sales tax projections of this year are on pace to exceed what the county executive is saying the sales taxes are going to be in 2022. So hers is the floor. That, that means that she's projecting a 0% increase or less, or a reduction next year. So where do we get our numbers? Well, they're based on the Office of Legis Legislative Budget Review's estimate, the controller's estimate of what the sales tax increase is going to be next year. It's also based on a national forecast of economic growth of 3.7% and the Moody's regional forecast of 5.3%. Um, moreover, it's based on just common sense and knowledge of what's going on in the world. Uh, we see inflation going up and up and up. People are spending more money on goods. Unfortunately for those people, when they spend more money on goods, they're also spending more money on sales taxes. So any projection that the sales taxes are going to decrease in 2022 is similar to 2021. It's completely unrealistic and a, you know, a bad budgeting. So we are putting in a reasonable 3.7% growth in sales taxes in 2022. Very achievable, very consistent with what the, uh, the uh, you know, all, all sources that we're getting. So any further comments? All right. To, to, to the remarks of the uh, presiding officer, I, I would add uh, that the, 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 I, I think that the administration, and I would include NIFA and this, are the reckless parties over here. Going, going back, we see that there's a, it was a surplus in 20 and, and a surplus in 21. However, take away federal aid uh, last year, how much of a surplus do you have anymore? Take away the refinance. Uh, which is which? Which NIFA did a, a year ago? What kind of a surplus do you have now? Looking at that that refinance, what have, what have we done over here? We take we take uh, the eighty something million dollar debt repayment that had been scheduled for this year, and you kick it into the future. So things look great now, but what happens in twenty three over twenty two? the debt service explodes by 
86%, as that's the number that I calculated. It goes from 100, I believe, is 60 million or so, to over 300 million. That is, that's what I call reckless. And, that, and that's what, I think that's what people should be focusing on. We have to look at not only what's happening now, we have to look at what's happening tomorrow. And I think, I think that, that what the administration and IFA have been doing is concentrating on short-term political gains for the, uh, uh, at the expense of, of the financial security of our children and our grandchildren, and even us, just a couple years down the road. May I, I, I know, President Officer, you mentioned that, that the, 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 some of the forecast numbers you receive from OLBR, and we trust OLBR. We've always felt that they provide sound fiscal information in, in, in substantiating the 3.3 percent growth that you believe in sales tax versus the county executive's 3.1 growth. But, but that being said, this is where the fiscal responsibility comes in, and I'm not going to put Maurice Chalmers in a position, but, but, but is it wise to use every inch of that potential growth on some of the initiatives that you're putting forward without doing the proper analysis on the fees, without doing the, 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 the proper analysis on the, on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the tax decrease. We all want to see the taxes go down, and that's why we were ready to support the county executive's budget, because it was done with some level of fiscal responsibility. Um, if you're saying that Mr. Chalmers presented to you a forecast that substantiates 3.3, I don't doubt it. But this is where the fiscal responsibility and restraint comes in. And quite frankly, I don't see it in your budget proposals. Um, we would have liked to have, like, to have a much broader, a larger conversation. The conversation has to include NIFA, because if you can't present something and get the hopes of taxpayers up, thinking that they're going to receive, I think based off of your numbers, a $50, a $50 million increase, uh, I'm sorry, a $50 per household increase in their taxes. And if NIFA says, no way, we're not going to do it because your sales tax forecast is off, it's not going to happen. See, this is the thing. We, 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 we have to do what's, what's best for uh, the county, but at the same time do something in a fiscally responsible, fiduciary responsible way, and we don't see it. As long as NIFA is sitting there over our heads, they're going to have much say in terms of what the growth rate we're using. They're going to have much say, rate, say in what taxes we decrease by. If it was up to me, I would cut people's taxes in half. But I know that's not going to pass muster with NIFA. I just want to also indicate that the county executive's proposed budget is a, a lot of discussion about property taxes. Her reliance on property taxes from the proposed budget of this year to from last year went down 28.1% to 23.1%. So there's less of a reliance on property tax. And she actually bumped up the sales tax. Um, so I think from that standpoint, her budget does provide a balanced uh, pathway to, one, uh, providing relief to rate payers and taxpayers, but then two, more importantly, it, it allows us to get the cloud of NIFA from over our heads and it moves us in a direction of removing NIFA while at the same time being fiscally responsible. And I think residents understand that and they want to support that type of leadership in their government. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That'll be the last word. Um, we're, we're going to move on to the vote on these amendments. Again, these, this vote will be on the majority's amendments to the county uh, executive's budget. Uh, all in favor of the majority amendment signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? This is, this is for the amendments. This is the vote on the majority's amendments, yes. It's to amend the budget. This is the vote on the motion to amend the budget. So, so let me, let's do it again. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Uh, all right. So, let, okay. Now, there seems to be some confusion. What, what this is, we had called, we had called the budget. So, the budget is before us. Then we proposed amendments. So, the amendments are now before the body. Not the budget itself, the amendments to the budget. All right, so uh, uh, let's do that one more time. 
All in favor of this motion to amend, which is the majority amendments to the budget, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. 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 Okay, so we have 11 votes in favor of the majority, 11 votes from the majority in favor of the amendments, eight votes against the amendments by the members of the minority. So the motion passes, so now we have an amended budget. So, so what we need to do now, now that it has been amended, we need to have a vote on the amended budget. The budget as amendment, correct. Uh, so all in favor of the budget as amendment. This incorporates the, the majority's yes. amendments. All right, so the amendments you just voted I just against. have a, a, yeah. a brief oh, sure. uh, statement. Um, it'd be really brief, Rich. Um, in, li in light of the fact that the, the majority's um, amendments to the budget, to the county executive budget have passed, um, and as I said before, we believe that the county executive presented a very fiscally thoughtful, balanced budget. Um, we, I am urging my side to abstain for the two reasons. One, um, there is a, a NIFA board meeting that is occurring later on this week, and without knowing exactly how these amendments have been vetted to them, we feel that it, it is uh, not the most prudent time to present amendments that can, quite frankly, in our opinion, um, uh, hurt the financial situation of the county. And then two, we believe that the county executive's budget, and we would have liked to have an opportunity to vote on it, would have provided taxpayer relief while at the same time providing uh, fiscal responsibility. Uh, we would have liked to have seen that amendment and had an opportunity to vote on that, on, I'm sorry, on that budget per se itself. So for those reasons, um, we are, I'm asking my side to vote to abstain on the budget, waiting to see the outcome of NIFA, and then I envision at some point there will be some level, depending on what the county executive decides to do, there'll be some type of override vote as it pertains to that particular process. Okay, so this will be a vote on the budget as, as amended. All in favor of the budget as amended signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, those abstaining. All right, so then abstain. we have a vote of 11 in favor of the budget as amended and eight, eight abstentions by the members of the minority. <clears throat> okay, now we move on to the tax levy ordinance, which is clerk item number 352 of 2021, ordinance number 103 of 2021, moved by legislator Walker, seconded by legislator um, Schaefer. That puts this before us. Uh, again, I guess... So we have to amend the tax levy based on the amendments put forth by the majority and, and passed by the majority. We'll, the motion to amend the tax levy ordinance is moved by Legislator Kennedy, seconded by Legislator Rhodes. Um, this, is, this is a motion to amend the tax levy. Okay. Yeah, we'll just go right into it. No. Oh, sorry. All right. So, uh, in terms of the amended amendment proposed by the majority, based on their budget amendments, uh, so we need a motion on the amendment, uh, the amended tax levy ordinance. Yeah. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed. Okay, so it passes by a vote of 11 votes for the members of the majority by, uh, to eight votes against by the members of the minority. Now we need to vote on the item, tax levy ordinance item, as amended. All, right, all in favor of the tax levy ordinance as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Those abstaining? Okay, so this passes by a vote of 11 in favor for the majority, eight votes in minority abstaining. Last but not least is the multi-year plan, clerk item 353 of 2021, resolution 196 of 2021. We have a motion second on the multi-year plan that can be made by Legislator Bino, seconded by Legislator Reggie Witten. That simply puts the multi-year plan before us, right? Yeah, okay, so now that the multi-year plan is now before us, we need a motion to, and second to amend that in, uh, as per the majority amendments. Moved by Legislator Gaylor, seconded by Legislator Ferretti. Uh, 
and in terms of the majority amendments now to the multi-year plan, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those, oppo those opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay, so it, no, it, it's, this, this is on the amendment. So that it, pa it passes by a vote of 11 votes for by, on the, by the majority members, eight votes against by the minority members. Last but not least, now that the, the resolution has been amended, we need to vote on the amended resolution. Uh, okay, sure. Um, so uh, all in favor of the resolution as amended signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, those abstaining. Abstain. All right, so the, <clears throat> the item passes 11 votes in favor by the majority, with eight abstentions by the minority. We need a motion to close the meeting. Moved by Legislator uh, Ford, seconded by Legislator <laughs> Every, everyone else. <laughs> well, seconded by Legislator Drucker, all in favor? Signify by saying aye, aye. As opposed, we are adjourned. Thank you.